Dual Review is brought to you by SpiderWolf.com. Hey guys, welcome to Dual Review. We got a great week, starting off with Rising Stars, followed by Persona 3, and then for our focal point, Roma, the tabletop game. That's right. Our anime this week is Claymore, and our movie is Plunkett McLean. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. <laughs> Hey everybody, today is the 12th of August, and we're taking a look at the comic, Rising Stars. That's right, and this is a Top Cow slash Joe's Comics uh, uh, comic book, and it was created by Mike, uh, J. Michael Straczynski. I knew I was going to get it wrong. J. Michael Straczynski, uh, who's done many things. I'm sure you know uh, he's around. He's just a wonderful... Supreme Powers, which yes, we love. Yes, Supreme Powers, uh, which was one, uh, our first ever dual review was on supreme powers I think so one of my favorite comics ever and this one in my opinion is very high up there too i don't think it's as good as supreme powers but it's definitely got a same kind of flavor to it that i agree with yeah, yeah. so essentially the plot is in i think it's Pet peterson iowa or something like that or idaho peterson idaho or peterson iowa it doesn't matter uh, a giant ball of light comes crashing down and any child who was in uterus at the time in utero in utero thank you in utero at the time is the, <laughs> the, that's the term that they use but essentially if they were still in their mama's womb um they were given uh they were irradiated by this light and they were given these powers and there's a lot of question as to where the where the light came from what it does um but that's kind of not where the comic book focuses it kind of focuses on the 113 kids born and believed to be supers uh, people who who demonstrated super superpowers uh, in the early uh, days of their life. Um, so there's super strength, there's super speed. There's uh, one character who has like a giant light, you know, he just emits light. And he was an interesting character, although I, I, I kind of wish they they didn't finish him the way that he finished. And I don't want to say exactly how that is. Yeah, don't. Yeah. So I, I wish that they did more with that character because he could have been a lot more interesting. Um, Telekinetic abilities are yeah. just basically the stereotypical. Right. Uh, but it's all from one specific force. So it, the story follows these 113 as they either become heroes or they, they use the power for their own selfish gain or they decide that they don't want to use the power at all and just want to fade into society and become regular people. Uh, but there's also a whole lot of, you know, uh, what how the government reacts to it and, you know, what they do. Then there's, you know, uh, them fighting against each other. And then there's... Well, I don't want to give that part away, but it's a little bit of the first uh, of the former uh, uh, problem. Um, so, so that's pretty much Rising Stars in a nutshell. I think it's a great comic. But what did you think? Well, I, I did like it. There's a lot of content there to like. Having said that, I do have some issues. Now, you're talking about all. Oh, and there's this. No, that's pretty much all there is, at least for the first half of this comic. Right. Is all the government involvement and the kids, you know, kind of dealing with that and and. You know, figuring out their powers. There's different tiers at the beginning. You know, it's like the strongest are here and the weakest are here, and then some don't even have powers. And uh, it's it's just kind of one of those, you know, it's a slice of life kind of interesting. But there's really no uh, action for the first like 11 issues, so I kind of have a problem with that. Just be, I'm I'm usually the one that's like, take your time with the story, don't rush it. But they really should have used the opportunity to jump into a battle and then been like three years ago or something like that they right. didn't really do that they didn't do any of that they just slowly built it and i guess i give them credit for that but i found myself kind of bored for the first you know 10 11 it's like it's a great idea don't get me wrong hmm. and it does have definitely uh the feeling of supreme powers uh i think the art is solid i think the writing is solid but it's just so slow so to, to quickly kind of interject um you don't think that the first 11 chapters did well as far as character development? Sure they did, but you need more than that. Okay. You need more than just that. I, I mean, because it's literally like reading a, you know, whatever. We're, we're comic people. It's like, I enjoy reading a novel too, but it was so slow, dude. You don't you don't agree that you don't see that at all? Honestly. Because issue 11 is the first battle. Before that, nothing. Absolutely well, nothing. It's a comic about superheroes. That, that's not entirely true because um, there was the issue with Pyre and, and Flag, who then became Patriot. Um, he was battling Pyre for a while. Not really. Yeah, it, it only happened once or twice. But yes, there was very little action before the first 11 comics. But then it goes in a completely different direction. And that's what I loved about this comic is the fact that it goes from 
just just people trying to figure out who they are as far as their powers and who they are as a person and what their role in their life is, and then just flipping it into this kind of chaotic realm, well, and then what happens afterward. You know, don't take me wrong, I agree with that statement. I, I do really enjoy this book. I just was so surprised that they held back so much for so long, and normally I would, like, champion them, but they could have done so much to make it more engaging at the beginning. That's all I'm saying. Right. Uh, for me personally, it was just kind of kind of drug on. Now I wanted to read it, and it was interesting. And then finally, when things started, to me, it's like okay, the first like three issues uh, are completely superfluous. Pick one at random that serves the purpose of all three of them. I don't think you can argue with that because they're literally the same thing. They're exactly the same thing. They talk about the government program, and I'm talking about zero too. I'm I'm throwing that in there too. Okay. Zero and then half. Right. Half is, yeah, that was a kind of an interesting story on the side about someone who wanted to have powers but didn't kind of thing. So it all kind of gives context, but it gives the same context. So really, literally, if someone's interested in this and they don't want to be kind of bored, I would say skip, you know, two of the first three issues. Like, I really would. Because it doesn't, it doesn't give any insight into John or, or um, Randy or, you know, Fisk, Raven Shadow. Uh, it doesn't give any insight really to them at all. Right. Uh, it does. It does again. You know, kind of introduce you to the kids and what they had to deal with. But every one of them does the exact same thing. So I don't know if they were just like trying to like we need to stall because we're writing more, or if they just had such little nuanced things that they wanted to include everything. So they just made huge three comics. I think that's kind of a problem, honestly. Hmm. But having said that, I really do enjoy it. Again, I really enjoy it. Don't give me, you know, shit for, oh, you, you can't look objectively, blah, blah, blah. You want action? You're a movie star or whatever. I enjoyed it. I just think that they really could have used the opportunity to have something else as a catalyst to get you through those books. Right. That's all I'm saying. Um, of course, by the end, it's great. I, I love, I mean, I don't want to, again, we don't want to spoil it, but um, Critical Mass, I think she's awesome. Yes, I she's think she's an awesome fun. character, too. And, and, you know, some of the little twists and turns they have is are really great. And, again, it does give me the vibe of Supreme Powers, even, like, uh, Irredeemable, which I love so much. Yeah. You know, it has that kind of thing. But, see, Irredeemable, right away, you had, like, the apocalypse, you know, the po apocalyptic thing that happened. Right. And then it was kind of, like, plugging in the pieces after that. It's much more an engaging kind of mystery than literally sitting there and watching it from day one. That's all I'm saying. Well, it's like... You need to tell a story. Okay, in in the first eleven in chapters, an way. yeah, in the first eleven uh, issues, and I'm trying not to give too much away, but there is a matter of um, some of the specials dying and the investigation going on. Essentially, the first eleven chapters is poet's investigation into the deaths of his his friends, his his you know uh, specials like him. Um, so that, but because there wasn't any actual action. That still didn't do it. Like, the murder mystery bit didn't really get you? I mean, because that kind of got me. I was kind of curious well, this, who was... This is not what I'm saying, though. It's like, it's all engaging material. But right. think of, like, Watchmen, for right. instance. Right. It starts with an event. Yes. Right? And you're sucked in immediately. And you're like, oh, I want to know about this character. I want to know... This didn't have any of that. So maybe if it had start, started with, like, Jason and Pyro, you know, even... Or, or the first death or something... It would have totally sucked me in more. Mm. Now, of course, you could, you know, if you did that, then people would compare it to like Watchmen or that sort of thing. But that's why Watchmen is so beloved, is because it doesn't pull punches and it takes its time, but it does it in such a way that you're just like on the edge of your seat the whole time. This did not do that for me until like issue 11. Then it was like, okay, this is starting to get fun. Um, I do love that they did similar again to before Watchmen. I didn't even think of that. Uh, but the news article, that whole issue, yeah, was yeah. really interesting. Although, I did find myself a little bored at the end. Of it, that it was one. a lot of reading, it's but, true. But um, they have a few little things like that. Um, so, a different way to show story and to give character. And I really enjoy that. Because it's more of an objective look. Maybe what you're supposed to see or, you know, whatever. It's just, it's interesting. Yeah, I agree. So, again, I do really like it. But it's so darn slow for the first and I just can't get around it. And, again, I usually appreciate things that take their time. And I don't hold it against them really i just think that that was a, a perfect opportunity to do some unique thing that would get us invested right away that they just didn't do mm. but it's a great it's a great comic and i highly recommend it yeah okay well it's only 24 issues i recommend it um there are also spin-offs there's three spin-offs there's um there's rising stars bright which follows the path of matthew bright um who is the police officer and all he ever wanted to be was a police officer um, and I just, I, I really dug that story. I think, I think that one was really down to earth. I, I, I like that one. Then there was uh, Voices of the Dead, which follows, um, what is his name? Lionel Zerb, who can speak to the dead. And uh, that one was okay. It was, it was okay. 
uh, gave a whole lot of secrets, but it, it, they're really kind of outlandish secrets. Um, and then uh, the third one was Untouchables, um, which follows the story of Laurel Darkhaven, I believe her name was, uh, and her ability was to essentially control very minute things, very small things, so she becomes a, a CIA assassin, and it's kind of her trip into that. And that one was, again, down to earth, and that one was really fun. So so of the three, I would suggest The Bright and The Untouchables. But the entire 24-issue series is, is just wonderful. I think you should check it out. Um, and if you can find it in paperback, which has everything, zero through the extended... Um, the the the, the spinoffs it's just a wonderful book i think you'll love it yeah so. i agree i think it's it's well written just be prepared the first two end issues are a little bit tedious yeah just, just a little bit but it, it it's again it's very interesting it's just it keeps it from being a before watchman or a watchman because even though you do get slow time with some of the characters you don't get all of them you only get a handful right so it's kind of irritating that way whatever so anyway there's just some opportunity that I, it's such a great book i'd like to see them take advantage of those as well but it is great so you should go check it out all right, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Please uh, follow us on YouTube and subscribe. Uh, enjoy our playlist. Game Live's been a lot of fun. Yes, it has. And please leave comments. We love comments. And you can help support us by buying our wares at spiderwolf.com. That's right. T-shirts, a car game, art print, shirt stories, and more. And if you're on Facebook, so are we. So find us and friend us. And if I'm online, I will talk to you all the time. <laughs> and we're both blogging. You can follow me, fisk37.tumblr.com. I'm blogging as characters, leaving character sheets. And, um, yeah, take a look if you like it, share it, support me that way. And I, as well, am blogging at nicholasbach.tumblr.com. Uh, it's just my short stories and poetry, so if you're interested, just check that out. All right, guys. See you later. No! no. There you go. There's a gun, again. And you won because of the gun. Freaking gun. But I got two of Coming up on Dual Review, it's Persona 3. is getting out of control. It's all fluffy. And yeah, I'm so surprised that you haven't shaved it yet. I just figured I might as well have fun with it while I, you know. I like it shaved, I prefer it shaved, but while I'm still young, I should grow it out for my wife to see, because she's never seen me with hair. It's in the frustrating interim where it all wants to go whoop, like, you know, trying to escape from my head. I like that the top part is really wavy, but the, it's just only slightly wavy on the sides and the back. Yeah, it just kind of depends. You should, like, mohawk that bit. Yeah, I, well, I kind of do, usually, but... Yeah. And I'm starting to get gray hairs, but only right here on the sides, which I think is cool. Oh, yeah! I want to have wings. Yeah, you poor old bastard. <laughs> <laughs> not that much older than you. No, he's not. <clears throat> um, so what are we doing? I'm sorry. Who's, who's my dad? Albert. No, my dad's name is Stan. Stanley? Yeah, Stanley. That'd be awesome. I like the name Stanley. I, I want to name my kid Stanley, but my dad is my dad is Stanley Townsend Bach. No, I so, Stan Lee. Oh, Stan Lee. Stan Lee. Yeah. Well, then it would be Stanley, Stanley Lee Bach. Stanley Lee Bach. I like the name Stanley. I think it's a nice, solid name that most people forget about. You know, forget to use as baby names. You know, when they're thinking of kids. And Butch. But I don't think I would need Bruce. <laughs> Bruce is a nice name. Yeah, not these days. Why are you laughing? I Come on, a, Butch. My uncle's name is, was Butch. Well, what if it, you know, the, the, your your son is slightly effeminate for a while? Everybody's gonna think you're just a horrible person. This is my gay son, Butch. No, no, no. The, you know, whatever. Butch lesbian was where I was going. Oh, I got you. I got come you. on, Butch. It's like, oh, come on, give her a break. <laughs> you wanted a son, didn't you? He has a son. He See? Has a son. <laughs> Just well, because he tense. wears dresses. I'm telling you, I kind of understand. What? Um, the female, you know, wardrobe is much more elaborate. You know, I I've been thinking about doing some cosplaying and like costumes that I would make, and the girls are so much cooler than the guys. Like anything that a guy would wear is just you know plain and. and we well, also can play off the fact that they're a girl, right? You can do the you know kind of hard hard edge but it has soft obviously because she's a girl yeah so it's like ooh, interesting yeah or if it's, it's a guy you know you can't do the opposite like do soft you're just like Ugh. yeah can't. well most of those are i can't i can't do anything soft it would look horrible on me <laughs> have like a ruffled you know thing and like ruffles on your sleeves yeah i don't even know what you do they're all boring yes anyway men's clothes are men's clothes are boring but I look good. We should wear it. We should wear a shirt that says that. Men's clothes are boring. Yes. But I don't know what kind of. Actually, that would just work by itself. Men's clothes. Just literally, are just men's clothes are boring. Nothing else. Yep. I agree. That's what we should do. New shirt idea. Write that down.